good evening. Um, so, uh, innovation is now recognized to be one of the most important ingredients in a modern economy, accounting for over half of economic growth in the US and the UK. And we've struggled in this respect in Japan, uh, and companies like Sony and Panasonic have been overtake, overtaken by Apple and Google. And the government's responded by launching various initiatives and reforms to try to kind of uh, improve this at the macro level. Today I want to speak about a, a change that I think uh, each individual can make, a change in mindset, uh, which is much more immediate, which is important in uh, stimulating creativity and innovation. So, uh, I love Japan. I was born here and uh, I, uh, I moved back here from the UK about nine years ago, but there are a number of challenges in this respect in Japan. 98.5% uh, of the population in Japan is ethnic Japanese. What that means, there's very little room for diversity. Uh, in addition to this, uh, Japanese society really values harmony or what? which leads to a society which is very consensus-bound and group-orientated. Now, those two, two factors, I think, some of the, uh, the most uh, challenging aspects of Japanese society for individuals to go out and really seek out and develop new and unique experiences. So, I was born in Japan to British, uh, British father and a Japanese mother. Uh, which meant, you know, from a very young age, I was thrown into new uh, experiences. So, when I was nine, I moved from the UK, uh, sorry, moved from Japan to the UK. And I had to, I was thrown into British culture for the first time in my life. British culture, British cuisine, uh, having to eat baked beans every meal. <laughs> Today I'm not going to speak about baked beans. What I wanted to share with you is, is an experience I had in London while I was uh, studying to become a lawyer. Um, I was involved in a project called the Sputnik uh, Whole Life Catalogue. Now the project involved compiling interviews from uh, 80 innovators from various fields around the world. They're artists, designers, architects people working in media, people working in the business world, people who had really carved out a unique niche for themselves uh, in whatever field they worked in. Now, Sputnik it sp itself was inspired by another publication from the 1960s, which was called the Whole Earth Catalog. Does anyone here, has ever, anyone come across the Whole Earth Catalog? One person. So the, the Whole Earth Catalogue uh, was a publication, countercultural publication, which was launched by a man called Stuart Brown. Um, and it was a product catalogue, but it was hugely influential uh, in, in various fields, including tech. Uh, Steve Jobs described it as the Google search engine before Google came along. Now, we were inspired by that publication, but we wanted to focus on individuals from various different fields and really understand how these people had achieved what they had achieved. And uh, so while I was studying to become a corporate lawyer, which I have to say is uh, not that uh, interesting in itself, I had the opportunity to actually meet and interview uh, some people I really looked up to. So. Uh, I interviewed in London uh, a guy called Aubrey Powell, who uh, ran an outfit called Hypnosis, and they designed many of the uh, classic album covers of our generation. So album covers by Pink Floyd, uh, Led Zeppelin. Um, I also had the opportunity to interview a, a guy called uh, Tyler Brule, who uh, was a war journalist, then set up a magazine called Wall Wallpaper Magazine. And then, you know, has gone on to set up Monocle magazine, which I think some of you would have heard of. So the, the reason why Sputnik was so important to, to me was throughout uh, all these interviews that we conducted, all, all, the, all the interviews that we compiled and read, all these innovators really kind of uh, highlighted the unique sets of experiences they developed. Uh, and those, those experiences were really important to them in uh, them innovating in their fields and achieving success. 
And I don't remember reading any interview that really talked about study. Uh, in fact, there were interviews, there was an interview by uh, a guy called uh, Mark Newson, who's gone on to become one of the leading industrial designers of our age. He, he, he now designs for, he's the first external designer to design for Apple. And he talked about the fact that he'd never, never studied design. And his kind of inspirations and influences came from traveling through different environments. So why are these new and unique experiences really important in terms of uh, stimulating creativity and innovation? Well, there happens to be a large body of academic research in this respect. And uh, one of the most famous proponents is a writer called Maria Popova. And she proposes a theory which she calls combinatorial creativity. And what she proposes is that uh, creativity is uh, combinatorial. Nothing is entirely original. Everything builds on what came before. And uh, we create by taking existing pieces of inspiration, insight, and experience and uh, which we build up over our lives, and we, we recombine them in new and fantastic creations. Another way she likes to describe it is by using Lego as a metaphor. The more of these experiences we have, the more uh, diverse the shapes and colors of our Lego building blocks, and the more diverse the creations we can, we can make. If we're limited to uh, a Lego building block of a certain size or a certain shape, we're, we're greatly limited in what we can, what we can create, even within our own uh, areas of expertise. Now, this idea of uh, combinatorial creativity is not particularly new. Um, Einstein himself uh, famously attributed a lot of his breakthroughs in physics on the fact that he had practiced the violin and he believed his practice of the violin was, you know, connected his brain in, in new ways, which allowed him to innovate in science. So, what does this mean for us in, in Japan? Um, since the, the, the end of the war in Japan, for the last 20, 30 years, Japan's really uh, been known for rapid improvements in quality and rapid improvements in, in efficiency. And now Japan is uh, faced by this challenge of moving from uh, this incremental innovation to a much more disruptive form of innovation. And this is a, it's a huge challenge and the government is launching various initiatives. I'm not uh, going to go into that, but uh, I think the focus of my talk today was really to highlight something that each of us have the power to do immediately. And that is really a change in mindset, which I think is particularly important in Japan, um, which is that each individual really just needs to understand the value of these new and unique experiences and go out and seek them out proactively uh, for as long as they can. I, I'm not really talking about, it's obviously very important when you're young, but it, this should continue for, for, for the rest of your lives. Um, we, we, we shouldn't be spending all our time studying. Uh, we should con continue to, to seek out new experiences, continue to learn new things, continue to explore a new trade, listen to new music, uh, experience new places, live in a new country. These are the experiences that are going to be pivotal in our lives and our careers, and the ones that we will draw on when we're faced with challenges and have to come up with new innovative solutions. So I, I'd like to finish this talk with the farewell message from uh, the, the Whole Earth Catalog. And this is the final publication from 1971. And I'd encourage you to try to find it. You can find uh, editions of, of, of this online. But I think this beautifully sums up the, the mentality that we need, the mindset we, we need, which is stay hungry, stay foolish. <laughs>